What is time? A deceptively simple question, yet it is the key to understanding relativity. It is also the reason my hair is going gray. <laughs> your latest projects with Nat Geo, like Genius and Mars and Breakthrough, it's not your first foray into science-focused productions. I mean, before that, you had A Beautiful Mind and my personal favorite, Apollo 13. So where does this love for science stem from? It really, really began with Apollo 13. And in making the movie, I realized how much drama there actually is in science, how much people cared about the process of not just surviving the mission, but getting, getting the astronauts back, doing the math with slide rules, trying to do the problem solving. Why do you believe that we need to celebrate scientists and mathematicians and engineers as celebrities? More than ever, we're, we're understanding that, that science is changing our lives. Look at what we as a, as a society gain from space exploration. It's cutting edge technology pushed to its limits. It's the best minds of, of our time focused on what is probably man's greatest adventure, which is, you know, to explore beyond the, the planet. But who's the genius that you're most drawn to? I had a very interesting sort of epiphany. I was beginning to prepare 10 hours for about Einstein, a genius series. And I was just finishing up a rock and roll documentary I did, I did about the Beatles uh, called Eight Days a Week. And I saw a parallel. They both had the courage to follow their own internal logic, whether it was in their music, in their behavior, their, their science, uh, or the way they viewed the, the world or their own religion. I saw a parallel. And that may be one of the definitions of genius, is that you see the world differently, and you turn out to be right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because if you turn out to be wrong, is that what they call crazy? <laughs> I'm afraid so. Yeah. <laughs> In throwing yourselves into these stories about you know the, our, our, the greatest minds that have ever lived, has that made you more of a science nerd? Like, have, has that made you more passionate about science and more of a science advocate? My biology teacher and other science teachers, if. If they're still alive, they must be kind of, uh, uh, you know, smirking that I'm even in this conversation with you. <laughs> that you were like, <laughs> let me just say, I wasn't a great about... science student. <laughs> uh, I'm not, did I ever get over a C? I don't know uh, if I ever did. But um, there's hope for you out there. <laughs> but it's what I love about my job, which is it provides me uh, a really compelling reason to to understand, to learn, to explore, and then to share that with audiences. You know, a lot of scientists out there, a lot of people in the scientific community have labeled the Trump administration as anti-science. We just saw the massive science march that happened just a couple weeks ago. What is your understanding of the Trump administration's stance on science? And does that, for you, do you feel any increased responsibility to tell these important stories? This is, this is a time to remind audiences how important science can can be how sort how important it's been to us in the past and what the excitement and the and the possibilities are for the future you don't want to hold back discovery i believe that 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 ongoing pursuit of what's possible out there will continue to suggest solutions for us here on earth